Copyright. Copyright can literally be construed as the right to make further copies. So when we say that a person has a right to make further copies, it presupposes the existence of a medium. Now we can think about copies being made in, on a medium or we can think of copies being transmitted through a medium. So the right to make copies, uh, this this distinction is important because you will see that copyright manifests itself on works and works have been largely defined as products that come from some kind of an intellectual or a creative effort. So what is a copyright? The copyright is an exclusive right which is given by the law which extends to a period of time. Like any other intellectual property right, this is a right that is constructed that is this is this is a right that is granted by the law and it exists for a period of time so it is a time bound right and copyright will fall within the category of limited life intellectual property a concept which we'll be seeing in our forthcoming lectures now who can have a copyright copyright can vest on the authors composers, artists or creators of artistic, literary, dramatic or any form of creative work. People who create or who come up with creative work can be the owners of copyright. It can also fall on their assignees. So an author writes a book and assign it to the publisher. So the publisher becomes the copyright owner. Now the right pertains to printing publishing, selling of copies of the original work. Now, original work, now you saw the word works here. Now, this is what we had mentioned would require some kind of a medium. So work is understood as something that comes on a medium and copy again is tied to the fact that you can make a further copy of a work. So these two concepts are important to understand the scope of copyright the fact that you can make more copies and it subsists in works creative works the right to copy or make further copies exists in literary or artistic works it exists in films in sound recordings as well now by this we refer to the right to make copies if it's a literary or an artistic word, we also refer to the right to broadcast and also the right to sell the copies. The right to copy in itself is not an end because why do you make these copies? The copies are largely made to exploit for profit. So exploitation by giving permission to somebody to use it, what we call uh, granting permission is called as a license or by a sale. So the sale of a copyrighted work can result in remuneration for the creator. Similarly, license of copyrighted work can also result in a gain or a remuneration for the copyright holder. So this is what we mean by exploitation. So the reason, fundamental reason why the right to copy is granted by the law is to allow the owners to exploit their work. For instance, a person publishes a book. When he publishes a book, he becomes the copyright owner of the book by a mere act of adding the copyright claim on his book. He just puts the copyright symbol, which is a small c within a circle and writes his name, the author's name, and followed it by the year in which he writes the book. Now this is what we call a copyright notice, which you will find in almost every book that you would come across. Either there is the name of the author as the copyright owner, or you will find the name of the publisher as the copyright owner. So when it's the publisher who's the copyright owner, then we understand that as a case of the author having written the book and having assigned the copyright to the publisher or the publisher had a team of people 
under its employment who wrote the book and the publisher's name figures in the copyright notice. So, and copyright is the easiest form of IP that you can create because 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 we had just mentioned that copyright can exist in any literary work and literary work includes best-selling books as well as the letter that you write to your friend or an email that you compose and send it to your colleague. Now, any written work is construed as a literary work and literary work, as I just mentioned, is the one of the easiest things that we can create. Almost every person who is literate can create a literary work. Now, the literary work need not be something that has value or something that has literary merit. Copyright law does not consider or does not get into the details of the literary merit of a work as long as it is created it is original and it is attributed to an author it can qualify as a work so an sms or a text message that you send is potentially a literary work an email you send to your colleague is a literary work so that makes copyright one of the easiest intellectual property rights to create and to own to create because you can sit and create it on your own. Any literate person can compose a few lines and it becomes a potential subject matter for copyright. And it's easy to own because the formality of owning is just adding this to the work, adding a copyright notice to the work, which again does not require filing uh, before a office like what we saw in the case of patents or even in the case of trademarks. So this is something that accrues immediately on the creator and it does not cost anything to display the fact of ownership. A copyright notice which an author can put in his or her book qualifies as a notice of copyright or notice of ownership. Now why does this right exist? The right we just mentioned exists to protect the authors and creators of the work to exploit and to make money out of their work, to commercially exploit their work. What happens if this right didn't exist? For instance, an author writes her book and the book is immediately copied by others in the market. Now that would amount to an infringement of her right. So infringement of a copyright is understood as a use without permission. Somebody uses the work, uses can be making copies, uh, making a play out of the book, it can be translating the book, it can be selling the book. Any of the acts that are protected under the copyright law, if a person does that without the permission of the copyright owner, then we call that an infringement. The relief of infringement can be injunction, getting a court order against the infringer and stopping the activities, the infringing activities, or it could also be damages. Damages pertains to a compensation in lieu of the loss suffered by the infringement. As a right, copyright is not without exceptions and limitations. There are certain exceptions and limitations to the use of a copyright. Now, fair use or fair dealing is one such exception which allows people to use copyrighted work. For instance, if a person who has purchased a book which is a subject matter of a copyright wants to copy a few pages or a few paragraphs from the book. Though copying would amount to an infringement, a few paragraphs or a few pages from a book is allowed under certain statutes. The law allows you to copy few pages provided there are certain restrictions to it. For instance, it is for personal use. So that is something which is allowed for or it is for the purpose of education, for teaching or imparting education to students. Again, that is allowed for. The copyrighted work is kept in a library and it is, the copyrighted work is kept in a lending library and the members of the library borrow the book. That is again something that is permissible. So fair use or fair dealing is something that is seen as an exception to the right of the copyright holder. Copyright subsists in original works. Now, originality is a requirement in copyright. Now, it's a requirement when it comes to 
literary dramatic musical or artistic work whereas originality is not a requirement when it comes to sound recordings broadcast typographical arrangements now we will see how this has evolved and what originality is unlike originality in the context of patent law and in patent law originality we don't use the word originality we say the invention has to be novel in a sense that it should not have been anticipated by the prior art the knowledge that went before in copyright law originality refers to the fact that it is unique in the sense that it originated from the author so that's that is all that is required to be shown if a work should be regarded as original it should have emanated from an author and by extension it should have been the author's intellectual creation so these two things one it originated from the author and it is his or her intellectual creation is all that is required to show that a work is an original work so this requirement in copyright law is easily satisfied in fact the originality requirement is not something which uh, any organization or office would even test for a copyright uh, for the grant of a copyright copyrights are granted by the mere fact that they are created and originality questions on originality would arise only when there is an infringement and there are challenges made to the copyright so in determining originality quality is not an issue for instance uh, rabindranath tagore's poetry has copyright over it and similarly poems written by a school kid would have similar protection copyright protection over the work so the protection over the work is not dependent on the quality now had it been the case that the copyright regime would look into the quality of the work then we would create an unfair situation where courts and judges would now act as art critics in the sense that they would now be given the right to judge the merit of an artistic work so thankfully we don't have that arrangement what we have is the fact that the courts will look into factors whether a work is being infringed or not and the court will not look into the quality of a work when it comes to determining disputes on copyright so the originality requirement as we just mentioned does not fall on sound recordings broadcast typographical arrangements these are called derivative works because sound recordings broadcast and typographical arrangements could have come from other works that already existed literary dramatic musical or artistic works so because they are re- regarded as derivative works derivative works don't need to be original when a broadcast is made every broadcast has a separate copyright vested on it for instance a live event is broadcasted there's a copyright on it and there is a repeat bo- broadcast the next day that has a separate copyright over it or to put it in another way if there is a book that has gone into 17 editions the book will have 17 copyrights over it each one different from the other films tend to be regarded as original works though they involve sound recording and some kind of broadcasting now they are treated as original works over the course of the evolution of copyright law they tend to be created as original works scope of the right copyright extends beyond mere copying it can extend to translation of literary works it can extend to public performances for instance there is a play a copyrighted play the public performance of the play could also be covered it could also cover technological developments for instance broadcasting a play which happens on a stage or storing information about a literary work on a computer or electronic transmission or hosting the work on a website all these things are regarded as technological developments of an existing work they are also covered by copyright they can be overlapping rights with regard to 
a artistic creation simultaneous creation we had mentioned this in the context of patent law if two people invent a patent if two people invent an invention at the same time law settles dispute with regard to creation by looking at the person who created it the first time so the person who law settles dispute with regard to creation by evolving a concept called true and first inventor and evolving a method of approaching the patent office called the first to file principle so the world today follows the first to file principle regardless of who invented the invention first the person who approaches the patent office first gets the invention so this is how priority is determined in patent law which means if two people simultaneously came up with an invention say on the same day the person who approached first the patent office will get the ownership over the invention copyright is slightly different you can have simultaneous creations and you can have overlapping rights over similar works for instance two photographers photograph the moon at the same time and their photographs look almost identical they use the same equipment and let us also assume that they they shoot the photograph from similar location as well without knowledge of each other and at the same time in copyright law there will be two copyrights over each of their work one work will not be regarded as a prior work as we would do in patent law rather both the works will exist as simultaneous creations so copyright law does not have the issue of priority with regard to creative works which patent law has and because it's not dependent on registration you can just create a copyright by just creating it or by adding a copyright notice to it to inform the world about the creation of the right it is again not hit by the issues of registration which patent law has so you could have simultaneous creation in copyright law and you could have overlapping or simultaneous rights over the similar creations the scope of the copyright protects only expressions of idea and it does not protect the ideas themselves so this is a key principle to understand this is called the idea expression dichotomy in copyright law now this tells us that there could be ideas but the scope of the copyright is only for the protection of the idea this is a good thing because if you look at various genres of novels say for instance murder mystery almost all murder mysteries have a similar theme to follow there is an event and there is doubt with regard to who committed that murder and there is an investigator who comes in and there are clues all over the place which which are largely misleading and at the end the least expected person f- is found to have committed the murder i mean it's a typical in a typical murder mystery so agatha christie is known to have written many murder mysteries and almost all her works are entirely different though they all fall within the same genre so if protection of ideas was the scope of copyright then copyright law would only be allowing the first murder mystery because that is an idea of a murder being solved by an investigator was as if that is protected then there cannot be any further murder mystery novels in that genre so the law does not protect the ideas themselves rather the expression of the ideas which means you can have an entire genre of murder mysteries written by different authors setting the murder in different locations with the different characters with different plots and with different ways of solving the mystery so this is a key distinction to understand that the scope of the right is not on the ideas but on the expression there are also certain disadvantages in protection of expression and not in protection of ideas someone comes with an idea for a quiz competition and the quiz competition which is meant to be a broadcasted event 
over the television is now being devised by this author and he captures all the details of the quiz competition how it has to be conducted how the candidates will move to the next level how to choose uh, uh, how to give them options to come up with the answers various details with regard to this quizzing event is developed by the author it is still in the stage of an idea because that itself cannot be a product somebody will have to conduct a quiz competition broadcast it over the tv channels make means by which the public can participate and make it into a event because copyright does not protect ideas if the concept or the idea of a quizzing event in itself cannot be protected because the law protects only the expression term and subject matter the term of a the term of a copyright is a limited term the copyright extends to the life of the author plus 60 years in india the owner of the copyright is usually the creator that is the author or in some cases it could be the employer if the employer has employed his employees to create the copyright and as a part of the terms of employment the copyrighted work would vest with the employer the creation would vest with the employer now copyrights can be assigned it can be a subject matter of assignment it can be assigned through the will from a person to his offsprings it can also be assigned while the person is alive by way of licenses there are also certain moral rights that vest in a copyright now we mentioned that copyright largely is the right to prevent others from copying prevent others from broadcasting or selling the copyrighted work but there are certain moral rights that could exist in a copyright the right to be recognized as the author is a moral right and also the right to object to derogatory treatment of the work is again a moral right that vests with the author now a parallel in patent law will be the right to be mentioned as the inventor a person who is an inventor has the right to be mentioned even if he is not the owner of the invention say he created the invention being an employee so he is not the owner of the invention or he created the invention and assigned the invention to another person again he ceases to be the owner but even if he ceases to be the owner he has the right to be recognized as the inventor similarly an author who creates the work has a right to be recognized as the author even if he is not the copyright owner in the in other words the copyright exists in another person by transmission by assignment or the work was commissioned for another person as a work for hire a person created this for another person so you can the author's name can still be mentioned as or the author should has a right to be recognized what would happen if there is derogatory treatment of a copyrighted work traditionally the relief would lie in the law of defamation there are provisions in tort law where you could file a case for defamation but since the moral rights are now recognized under the copyright regime uh, this is now the most but since moral rights have now been recognized under the copyright regime an author can take action against any intrusion of his moral rights again the subject matter of copyright is not based on its intellectual merit you can have a copyright on bills coupons telephone directories databases however the value in a copyrighted work is regarded as an investment because there is some amount of effort in time and material that goes into creation of these works so copyrighted works are expected to protect works that have value and the value is regarded as an investment and we had already mentioned that uh, intellectual property gives incentives for investing into the creative works and intangibles are created by investments made in intangible assets